Today's video is going to be pretty extreme because I'm going to describe an idea that just might resolve what actually startled or, or maybe even scared Einstein. He referred to it as spooky action at a distance, uh, which is quantum entanglement. But not just that, it might also, this idea of mine might also resolve all the weirdness that our scientists have been struggling to explain or, or just understand for a hundred years or so, which is the uh, double slit experiment. I know, I know how this sounds. I know how crazy the words coming out of my mouth sound, but I actually like this idea. I don't know if it's even a good idea, but I do like it. So I guess today's video is going to be a, not just about quantum physics, but about a possible solution to all the weirdness that just doesn't make sense to most scientists. And part of the reason that I like it is because it's very simple. So uh, I guess here we go. Some time ago I made a video that I think describes gravity slightly better than how scientists today describe it. Maybe slightly better is not the correct word, just slightly different. Uh, scientists uh, would likely say that uh, gravity uh, creates time dilation and I think they have it backwards. I think time dilation creates an effect that we call gravity. And what creates time dilation is that matter displaces space-time. And so I thought that why does matter displace space-time? That the answer would be within quantum physics. So I started trying to understand quantum physics. Uh, maybe a year or two, I don't remember. And on top of that, uh, for quite some time I had another idea that also describes slightly different the Big Bang to how scientists describe it and in fact uh, my my way of describing the big bang i think also describes what dark energy might be and so i've been uh, struggling with these ideas uh, emailing links of my videos youtube videos to scientists so far i, I haven't had any response i don't even know if they see them or any or or uh, see them and then just think that they're stupid and and never bother to respond but anyways though i've continued i decided that even though i don't know that my ideas are good ideas i continue i i decided to continue with them to try to understand quantum physics to maybe ultimately explain gravity uh my idea for the big bang and my possible explanation of dark energy so anyways though so I'm going to explain a little bit of, of those ideas and then ultimately, because of those ideas, I'm going to explain how I get to the this other new idea, relatively new idea, maybe a week old idea, that might just explain all the weirdness within the quantum physics world, that might explain spooky action at a distance and might also explain, or at least partially explain, the weirdness within the double slit experiment. And one of the uh, questions that I keep asking is, is this idea simpler and maybe less crazy than the mini worlds explanation of, the, uh, of quantum physics? And I think it is. I don't know if I'm right, but I think it's definitely simpler and it makes sense to me. I, I don't know how else to describe it other than that it is simple and it makes sense to me and I definitely like it. So here we go. Here's the idea, okay? This is, I'm going to start with how I describe the Big Bang and then, um, and then why I get into it because of gravity or because of my idea of gravity. So 
So I, I've told this story many times before, but uh, I'm going to hopefully make it quick. Um, it, the way scientists describe the Big Bang has always bothered me. First of all, they say that the universe was extremely small. And then they go on to say that, that there was no space and time or space time. Why would it be small if there is no space time? Why even use the word small when there is no space time? There is no such thing as size. In this version of the universe or at this point of the universe development where there is no space and time, there's no such thing as small. So why describe it as small? This struck me as extremely weird. So I came up with different words to hopefully describe the same thing that they were describing. So, so what I imagine, not that the universe would be bigger, just uh, maybe magnified so that I could mess with it, you know, so that I could imagine it in my mind. I imagine the universe being this big instead of so small that you couldn't even see it. I imagine the universe being not this big, but magnified so that I could mess with it, right? And, uh, and when they say that, that the universe, that there is no space and time in the universe, what I think they mean is that a, anything and everything that happens in the, in the universe happens instantaneously throughout the universe. If for whatever reason something happened on this side of the universe, it would instantaneously affect the whole universe, even in the direct opposite side of the universe. So in other words, there was no space and there was no time. You know, so causality was instantaneous. And I know how, I didn't realize at the time that I was contradicting something that Einstein's, or some of, uh, or a small part of Einstein's idea at the time. I didn't realize, you know, causality being constant, always. But uh, so, so I was imagining a universe where causality was instantaneous, which implied that there was no space and no time. And then for whatever reason, maybe because that's the nature of it, like uh, the Greeks would have said, uh, causality started to slow down. You know, it was instantaneous and out of the blue, it was not instantaneous. In other words, that something, if something happened on this side of the universe, the effect of that event would take time to, t to affect the opposite side of the universe. So in other words, the universe did not expand as they would describe it, simply causality started to slow down. It would take time for, uh, for what happened in one side of the universe to affect the opposite side of the universe. In other words, invoking space and time. So instead of the universe expanding the way they would describe it, it's simply that uh, causality started to slow down. And so my idea was that, uh, that not just at that point of the universe development did causality start to slow down, but it has been continuously slowing down till this day, till today, and, and further on into the future. So now uh, what uh, scientists have uh, noticed, the, the phenomenon that scientists have noticed and call dark energy, now I have an explanation for it. It's because causality is slowing down, but it's slowing down so slowly that we can only notice it at extreme distance from galaxies extremely far away, that we can't notice it here in our everyday life. So that would be dark energy, right? That's my description of the Big Bang. And, and at the time, I thought I was just using different words to describe exactly the same thing that scientists described. I didn't realize until many years later when I was reading a book um, that uh, it hit me that I'm saying causality is not a constant, like Einstein says. Causality is constant. Well, anyways, though, so that was pretty much the idea, and I've had that idea for I don't know how long. And so about a year ago, I don't know, maybe two years ago, I started trying to understand quantum physics because I think the ultimate answer that describes gravity is within quantum physics. And I, I understand that scientists are trying to figure out why gravity doesn't seem to uh, go in line or, or uh, merge or somehow live together 
with the uh, quantum world. I have an idea for that, but I'll leave that for another video because I haven't given it much thought. I, I need to think about it much more before I, you know, make a video about it. So anyways, though, so, so now I'm trying to understand quantum physics. I'm, I've actually been trying to read a book about it that I haven't been able to get into it. Uh, uh, I think I've read that most like 10 pages because of what has been going on within my life with one of my kids being sick and all that stuff. But anyways, though, so, so for me to relax, I, I try to think of this, you know, with all the uh, drama going on in this past year or two. And, um, and so, so I'm trying to understand quantum physics and it takes me a while to realize the first, the first line in the book about quantum physics should say that everything blows. It would have been so much simpler if it just said everything glows, I was oh okay, everything glows okay. Let's keep going, but uh, it takes forever to describe that. So, anyways, though, so <clears throat> so I'm trying to understand. Uh, I'm trying to read this book. I'm trying to understand uh, the double slit experiment, and I'm trying to understand uh, what they mean by uh, spooky action at a distance or um, or quantum entanglement. And I'll, I'll link a few videos in my description, if I can find them again, that I think describe those two phenomenons extremely well, or which were the videos that I finally understood what the hell they were talking about, which is Veritas and I don't remember the other one. Well, anyways, so, so I have all this in my head. I'm trying to understand it. And then I realize that, uh, that I've always had another problem that I've never been able to resolve that I that I always thought it was it was a problem with semantics right it's just the words that are that I would rather use than the words that the scientists use but then I realized that uh that I've I've had that problem before and the the solution was actually a pretty good idea what I think is a pretty good idea for uh, dark energy and uh, and how and why the, and what created space and time, you know. So then I start thinking that uh, maybe it's not a semantics idea. Maybe it's not just the words. Maybe it's a. Uh, maybe the answer lies within those words that I prefer to what they prefer. Okay, so here I'm going to describe another phenomenon, a very Einstein phenomenon, that I think eventually led me to what I think might be the solution to spooky action at a distance and the double and the weirdness of the double slit experiment. So I've described this in a previous video. I actually described this, I used this script this description of Einstein's ideas to to get people to understand just how crazy Einstein's ideas were at the time and still are today. I start by telling them that uh, the the light from the sun takes eight minutes to get here, right? From our perspective, but the light, but that same light from the sun, from from the light's perspective, gets here instantaneously. The light from uh, the furthest galaxy uh, away that we've been able to see, thirteen billion light years away, takes thirteen billion years. To get here, but from the perspective of that light, uh, it gets here instantaneously. In other words, for for the light, for photons, for light particles, time does not exist, and not just that, but space does not exist. It traverses the enormity of space instantaneously, so not so time and space does not exist, and not just that. Because photons don't have mass, then mass does not exist. So in other words, from the perspective of photons, from the perspective of light particles, the universe has not changed from before the Big Bang to after the Big Bang. From the perspective of light, there is no space, and there is no time, and there is no matter. So nothing has changed. So in other words, this universe from the perspective of light is still extremely small 
how they would describe it, um, uh, scientists, how scientists would describe it. How I would describe it is that causality is still instantaneous, that the universe has not expanded or causality has not slowed down. And, and so I always had this idea in my head, who is correct? Are the photons correct that this universe has the same universe, that this same universe does not have space, time, or matter, or are we correct? Because we can see it, you know, we can see matter, we can see space, we can, you know, we live within time. Time seemingly from our perspective is moment by moment moving forward. So who is correct? Is the light particles, photons correct? Or are we correct? And, uh, and I always thought, <clears throat> I always thought it was, this issue was an issue of semantics and I didn't give it much more thought. But about a week ago, it occurred to me that maybe <laughs> the photons are right. And uh, and uh, it occurred to me which of the two can prove that that they're correct. Can we prove that we're correct, or can photons prove that that they're correct? That that there is no space and no time and no matter. And it occurred to me that their proof is quantum entanglement, spooky action at a distance. If if they were wrong, if if uh, photons from their perspective were wrong. That there, that there is space and there is time and there is matter, then how in the hell do they, are they able to communicate with each other at extreme distances instantaneously? How in the hell can uh, spooky action at a distance, what startled Einstein, how in the hell is that possible? But that they are correct. The photons have actual proof. They can prove to us that they are correct that there is no space, that there is no time, and there is no matter, that nothing has changed from before, before the Big Bang to after the Big Bang. We are mistaken. So what the hell, what the hell do we see, space, time, and matter? What is this? What the fuck is this? How can they be correct and we be wrong? Well, it turns out that, uh, not only, not only can they prove that they are correct, that photons are correct, and we are wrong, but it also explains all the weirdness, or I don't know all of it, but some of the weirdness of the quantum physics. There's no space, no time, and no matter. The photons are correct. We are wrong. And our clue to them being right and us being wrong is all the weirdness of quantum physics. Spooky action at a distance, double slit experiment. It actually makes sense now. It would be weird if, if there was no spooky action at a distance. It would mean that we're correct and photons are wrong. And when this occurred to me, it was like two in the morning, I couldn't sleep. When this occurred to me, it actually scared me. So what the hell is this? What the hell is space and time that we perceive? If photons are correct, what the fuck is going on? What the hell is this? And, and I never liked the, the mini world explanation of uh, quantum physics. I never liked it because I thought it was a shortcut, a nonsensical shortcut to explain. I thought of it as very similar to how uh, back in the hundred, a few hundred years ago when they tried to explain as the Earth being the center of the universe with all the planets making weird circles all around us and the sun and the moons and, and the moons of Jupiter and stuff. It, it was too complicated. It, it, uh, where do they get all the matter for the other worlds, multi-worlds? It couldn't possibly be, you know. And I think this explains it better. Photons are correct. 
their view of the universe, they can prove their view of the universe. I'm struggling to find a way to prove it to myself that that <laughs> that our view of the universe has some level of objectivity that it doesn't just exist that is that it doesn't just exist within my mind it actually uh when this thought occurred to me it actually scared me so what the hell is this then if photons are correct if they can prove their view of the universe then what the hell is this that we are experiencing? I don't know what the hell this is. Uh, it's the, I guess, just as much as uh, as uh, spooky action at a distance seemed to have scared Einstein. This idea scared me at least at the at least at the moment that it occurred to me. It honestly scared me. So what the hell is this? Well, anyways, though, that's the idea. I like the idea. I have no idea if it's a good idea. I would be extremely uh, surprised if I'm correct on this. But I do like the idea. I guess that's it for now.